Hi everyone, welcome to Maulana Ajayar National Urdu University. This is Dr. K. Nagendra from the Department of English, Assistant Professor. And as you all know, in our previous session, we talked about importance of English language, importance of pronunciation, and importance of language. Then we also talked about standard model for English. And finally, we concluded by talking about pronunciation rules of rule of aspiration, ha, and we also talked about plural markers. In this part two of importance of pronunciation in communicative English, I am going to speak on how to pronounce past tense markers and how to pronounce r. And also, I will be talking about Indianism in pronunciation. Indianism means intelligibility of Indian speakers of English. This is also one of the difficulties which usually students uh, make or students pronounce with incorrect pronunciation. If a verb ends in a voiceless sound except t, that is if it ends in p, k, f, s, th, sh, ch, ed is pronounced t. Here, many of the students go wrong because, uh, as I've been telling you that, it's just because lack of exposure or they are not aware of the rule. See, according to the uh, students, those who are not exposed to, they say that picked, coughed, washed, latched, briefed, but that's incorrect pronunciation. So since ed is preceded by a voiceless sound, you have to end up with by saying t. It's not picked, it is picked. It is not coughed, it is coughed. It is not washed, it is washed. It is not latched, it is latched. It is not briefed, it is briefed. Because all the eds are preceded by voiceless sounds. Coming to the next rule in past tense markers, if a verb ends in a voiced sounds that is b, g, v, z, the, r, l, m, j, j, except d, ed is pronounced d. Like here, I don't think you feel so difficult because uh, you are well acquainted with these rules. It's dined, boiled, mobbed, bathed, coined. ED is preceded by all the voiced sounds, uh, but we usually say that. Uh, but here, I don't think you face any difficulties uh, because you got habituated to say that. Let's move on to third rule. This is very, very interesting. I said, except T and T. You may have doubt that, like what if, if ED is preceded by T and D, that's what I'm going to talk about. If verb ends in either T or D, then ED is pronounced ID, that is funded, fitted, repeated, guarded. Usually most of the speakers of English, they mispronounce with this. Like majority of the students, I came across many of the students, like they always make mistakes because like a uh, lack of experience. They say that funded, fitted, repeated, guarded. Do you think that it's a correct pronunciation? Is it acceptable? It may be acceptable in Indian context, but when it comes to, in case you just imagine that if you come across a native speakers of English, there is a possibility to misunderstand you. So one has to be very careful, like if you are really looking for very good opportunities, uh, like it is always important to have a good pronunciation. Instead, you have to say funded, fitted, repeated, guarded. That's the correct pronunciation. There are some other rules uh, like where we usually go wrong. Like coming to the minimal pairs. Minimal pairs means like where only one sound is replaced. Let us have a look at these examples. Many of the speakers of English, they 
tend to make mistakes. They hardly differentiate these two sounds. One is labiodental, other one is bilabial, semi-vowel. That is v and w. Please try to understand and look at my lip movement. That is v. When I say labiodental, it means that a combination like when in order to pronounce or articulate, I am using both lip and dental. So, it is not rounded, but when I say wa, which is bilabial and which is rounded, that is the major difference. It is way, why, west, west, wheel, wheel, went, went, while, while. So, look at this difference. We hardly differentiate in our day to day English. And there are even other rules which I want you to understand because if you are really particular about your pronunciation, the other major problem when the word ends with a age, a g e, the ending is pronounced age and not edge. But most of the speakers of uh, English, like those who are not well aware of this pronunciation rules, uh, they make mistakes. They say that courage, marriage, luggage, baggage, message, vintage bondage, advantage, village, wastage, cottage, manage. They always make mistakes because uh, like in Indian context it is acceptable because uh, like they, they follow the spelling. But here I want you to say age, courage, marriage, luggage, baggage, message, vintage, bondage, advantage village, vestige, cottage, manage. Did you find the difference? Yes, there is a vast difference. So, do not ever pronounce with them age, but you have to end up with by saying age. And other important one is r. There is a big doubt when you listen to American speaker, they always say r. But when it comes to Britain speaker, they never pronounce that. But there are certain rules which one has to understand. When ra is occurs before a consonant, it is not pronounced. I said if ra occurs before a consonant. Have a look at these examples so that you can understand them in easy manner. Look at this. I am just pronouncing with a mispronunciation how usually students make mistakes. They say cart, art, part. Mart, shot, skirt, park, mark, chart. Do you think that it is a correct pronunciation? Maybe according to you it might be correct pronunciation, but according to pronunciation rules it is not correct, it is incorrect. Let me read out with correct pronunciation. It is not cart because tie is preceded by ra. Okay? So, you have to say cart, ought, part. Mart, shot, skirt, park, mark, shot, sorry, chart. So, here since toy is preceded by ra, all the ta's are voiceless sounds. So, you are not supposed to pronounce that ra. You have to say cart, art, part, mart, shot, skirt, park, mark, chart. The other important rule which I want you to understand, you may get doubt. So, where should we pronounce or where we should articulate the tra sound? If ra is preceded by vowel sound, you have to pronounce them. Let us have a look at these examples. I do not think you have difficulties because you got habituated saying in that. It is courage, nurse, curry, berry, merry, cherry, carry, curse, purse, search. Here, if you could observe them, or if you could observe all these examples carefully and attentively, ra is preceded by voiced sound, all the vowel sounds. See, courage, nurse, curry, berry, merry, cherry, carry, curse, purse, search. Here you have to pronounce because ra is preceded by a vowel sound. When ra occurs at the end of the word, it is not pronounced. 
So you know very well about, this is the major difference between Americans and Britain speakers. So like most of the Americans, they pronounce it, but whereas Britain speakers, they never pronounce it. So according to standard English, we are not supposed to pronounce that ra since it occurs at the end of the word. Have a look at these examples. Car, bar, chair, clear, tiger, silver, flower, teacher. So you are not supposed to pronounce that ra because since it occurs at the end of the word. But if a word ends in a ra and the next word begins with a vowel sound, ra is pronounced. Have a look at this. Usually we come across these kind of things in connected speech. Let, uh, let us have a look at these examples. A car and bike. Is it a, a car? No, it's a car because ra is followed by a vowel sound a. Uh. So that's the reason since ra is followed by a vowel sound a, uh, we have to pronounce that ra. So a car and bike, that's the correct pronunciation. So one thing I want you to understand when it comes to this ra rule. This is applicable to British English. In American English, ra is pronounced in all the context. Indianism means intelligibility of Indian speakers of English. What exactly Indianism in pronunciation? It means I'm talking about intelligibility of Indian speakers of English. It is well known fact that a lot of research already taken place on phonological features of Indian English. One of the best examples is English and Foreign Languages University. We can also call it as EFLU. It used to call it as CIFL, now it became EFLU. In fact, this is the only university which has a separate department for phonetics in India. As a result of this, great scholars like M.A.K. Halliday, R.K. Bansala, Bala Subramanian, Sethi and Damija, Professor Prabhakar Babu and etc. have done a lot of research on intelligibility of Indian English and came up with interesting findings. Let me talk about what are the interesting findings which they came up with. According to Wikipedia, some Hindi and most of the Urdu speakers of English in India mispronounce some English words such as school as e school. They are adding e in the beginning of school. And similarly, some of the Indian speakers of English, they say sakul and stamp as e stamp. And they feel a little bit difficult when it comes to consonant cluster where sa and ta come together. And here also they added e in the beginning of the word stamp. Similarly, smile as e smile, spend as e spend. And some of the Kashmiri speakers and they say glass as galas. It is sometimes it's just because of their mother tongue and maybe even lack of exposure. And even there are also some problems. Some of the Indian speakers of English, they say that fail is pronounced as pale. They are replacing with labiodental with bilabial. And similarly, 50 as 50. Here also, they are trying to replace with f, which is labiodental. They are trying to replace with bilabial pa. That is one of the striking features of Indian speakers of English. And let me talk about another striking feature of Indian English is that is usage of ing words. Maybe you must be familiar with or maybe you must uh, have heard about maybe from your friends. An addition is added such as g. Like instead of singing, they use singing a they add extra or addition g which is not there in English language. Similarly, reading as reading a, maybe it is just because of their uh, mother tongue influence or maybe lack of exposure and sometimes uh, and knowingly or unknowingly they mispronounce and they add g. And 
let me talk about even a final example that is going as goinga like all these words like in english we have singing reading and going but when it comes to indian speakers of english they say that singinga readinga and goinga and it shows the interference of mother tongue and we can also say that even sometimes lack of exposure and lack of awareness and most of the north indian speakers they say that they mispronounce instead of saying that technology they mispronounce it technology and when it comes to tamilians and the one who speaks english and they say that egg as jag and here also they are trying to replace with some other sounds and they they also have habit of replacing k with g for example sivagami is pronounced as sivagami please don't try to misunderstand me i am not blaming anybody here but the only thing is like there are some sounds which are existing in their mother tongue but there are some sounds which are not existing in their mother tongue there they feel difficulty and there they go wrong and they mispronounce and coming to telugu speakers of english and they say ju instead of saying that zu and they are replacing with j with z and similarly sat shot see here and we have to say sat s a t and but they usually when it comes to pronunciation of these telugu speakers and they say that shot shot and and we also talked about many examples in our previous session like wet and wet and here also they are trying to replace with and bilabial with labiodental it is fact that most of the malayali speakers malayali speakers of english replace the sounds of ta pa b these are all we usually call it as plosives and they feel difficult when it comes to pronunciation of t p b and they usually replace with d and b sometimes let me give you some examples how they usually go wrong or mispronounce maybe it is just because like some of the sounds which are not existing in their mother tongue maybe they got habituated to pronounce even this target language like that temple is pronounced as demble in this word ta is replaced with da and similarly pa is replaced with ba that is why temple is pronounced as demble similarly simple they most of the malayali speakers they pronounce simple and here also if you keenly observe in case if you get an opportunity to meet any malayali speakers you please listen to them attentively so that you will come to know how they usually replace with pa with ba and similarly canteen is pronounced as canteen and here also ta is replaced with da voiceless sound has been replaced with voiced sound that is da uncle as pronounced as angle and here also kha is pronounced as g and they have replaced kha with g and i want you to understand one thing why they usually go wrong as i been telling you that there are some sounds which are not existing in their mother tongue and maybe even a lack of exposure this is also one of the reasons sometimes why they go wrong so these are all the problems of some indian speakers of english and let me add on some more examples like where and how indian speakers of english differs from this native speakers of english some of the indian speakers of english and particularly bengali speakers pronounce english as english and here also sh has been replaced with s and ship 
has been replaced with sip just because of one particular sound or just because of by replacing one particular sound the whole meaning is going to be changed. So, one has to be very careful with pronunciation of this English. So, please do not ever misunderstand if I say that this intelligibility of Indian, uh, Indian speakers of English. Like what I wanted to tell you that I am not encouraging you and even I am not demanding you to speak like a native speaker, but what I wanted to tell you that make sure that there is intelligibility in your English. As you all know that language is all about to understand each other, to share our feelings and to express our opinions and to talk to one another. And if you are not very clear to somebody and your efforts will go into vain, so one has to be very careful. I am not encouraging you neither to speak like a Britain speaker nor American speaker, but speak like an Indian with intelligibility. Let us recollect what we have discussed so far. Firstly, we talked about past tense markers. Secondly, we talked about rules of pronunciation. And thirdly, we learned how to pronounce R. And finally, I concluded by talking about Indianism in pronunciation of English language. I hope this session is very useful for you. There are certain books which I recommend you. The first and foremost book is Strengthen Your Steps, written by Hari Prasad and others. A Course in Phonetics and Spoken English by Sethi and Damija. One more important material which we have, Phonetics and Spoken English, like this was the distance material which was prepared by uh, CIFL, now it became EFLU. And I am going to come up with one more interesting topic, till then. Take care. Bye.